Today I'm going to give you a crash course on video scopes. Now I know scopes can be a little bit intimidating when you open them up in Final Cut if you don't know how to read them. So today I'm going to simplify them for you and show you the three scopes that you need to be looking at when you color correct your videos. We're going to talk in totally like layman's terms. You know how I do it. So I hope that at the end of this video you really feel confident when you're color grading your shots and using those scopes. Now first of all, why do we even have scopes to begin with? It's because we want some sort of standardization in the color of the videos that we're putting out into the world, whether that be in lightness or darkness, in terms of hue or saturation, there is a standard. It really comes from like the broadcast industry back in the day, but there's a standard of acceptable ranges in video. And the scopes are tools to make sure that we're in those acceptable ranges. So let's first open the scopes in Final Cut. How do we access them? You can head up to the top of your viewer, hit this drop down and select video scopes, or you can hit command seven and here is our waveform scopes now you can view more than one scope at a time so if you head to the view option here at the top of your scope you can do a two up display so you're seeing two scopes you could do three up so you're seeing three scopes I'm going to keep it on one scope for this tutorial so you can look really closely at the scope that we're working with. In addition, there's also these different types of scopes. So if you hit this icon here that looks like a little teeny bar graph, you can see we're selected on waveform. There's also histogram and there's vector scope. And these are the three scopes we're going to be looking at today. Now these scopes are gonna show us what's considered safe, right? Like we talked about, but just know that as you color grade, some of your like creative license comes into play, what your taste level is, or what you're trying to convey through your color grading as well. So there's what's kind of right and wrong, right? What's in the safe zones. And then there's like a whole area where you can kind of play around and have some fun. We're gonna first start with the histogram. The histogram measures the luma of your shot. So what the brightness levels are and what the darkness levels are within your shot. This is what's called the dynamic range. You might hear that term thrown around a lot. And so you wanna make sure nothing's too bright because your whites will get clipped or blown out. You've probably heard those terms, which basically means that it's so bright that you lose all the detail in the shot. So this might be really common if you're shooting indoors, but there's a window in the background and you can't see what's outside the window because the sunlight is so bright outside. On the other end, you could crush your blacks. That means your blacks are too dark. And again, you lose detail. You might see this commonly if someone's wearing, let's say a black jacket, you might lose the detail between the body of the jacket and the lapel. It all looks like one solid unit. So here is our histogram scope. What's considered safe is between this value, which is zero, and this value here, which is 100. These numbers are in units called IRE. You don't really need to understand what that means. It doesn't really matter. Just know that your darks can only go as low as zero and your lights can only go as high as 100. Let's first start with this shot here. You can see it's not very contrasty at all. There's a lot of whites in here and even the blacks don't really seem that dark. So now let's look at the histogram of this shot. You can see here that the blacks are not even close to reaching zero and the brights are, yeah, they're a little closer to the hundred, but they're not all the way there yet. This is a stylistic choice. This video is shot kind of like you might call it high key, which basically means that it's not very contrasty and it is pretty bright. And this is totally acceptable. It's a completely aesthetic choice. Now, if you wanted to increase the dynamic range of this shot and make it more contrasty, this is where you'd really want to use the histogram because you want to make sure you're not making your whites too bright or your darks too dark. So we've got our histogram turned on. Let's head on over to the color board and let's play on the exposure tab with the brights and darks and see if we can get them right at the limits of our acceptable range. Let's first start with the shadows and I'm going to bring it down and watch that histogram as I do it. I'm gonna bring that smallest part of that waveform right to the zero mark. Now let's raise the highlights and bring that last peak right up to 100. So that is the limit of what we can do in our shot in terms of contrast. In my personal opinion, I think it's too contrasty. What we could do is play with the midtones and brighten up those midtones a bit 
To me, that looks more balanced. Let's take a look at a before and after. You can see that the colors seem a little more saturated. Those blues in that pen are brighter. So this is a very balanced shot and we're still within the ranges on our histogram. Let's move on to the next scope I really think you need to know about, and that is called the RGB Parade. So what we're going to do is head to this little bar graph icon here, and we're going to go to Waveform, and this is the RGB Parade. If you're not seeing this, select that icon again, head over to Channels, and this is the one you want to look for. Now let's take a good look at this RGB parade. Again, we have our Luma values here. So you're going to see 0 to 100. And then we also have a red, green, and blue waveform image in this scope. This scope really separates out the red, green, and blue colors that make up our image. And it tells us if they are too bright or too dark because we have our IRE measurements here. So we go from zero to 100 here on the side. And the goal is that all three of these waveforms look very similar. That tells us that not one color is way oversaturated compared to the others. It's not a lot brighter than the others. And so this is a very balanced looking shot. Now let's take a look at a shot that's going to look completely different in the RGB parade. This shot is meant to simulate nighttime, and so it's really blue toned and dark. But if we examine the RGB parade scope with this shot, we can see that, of course, the blues are much more dominant than the green and red, but they are all within the safe zones that are considered acceptable. So this is a great example of your red, green, and blue waveforms not being perfectly uniform, and that's okay because there's a purpose for our shot being more blue-toned. We're trying to convey a different time of day than we would normally see, and so this is all fine. It's perfectly safe, and this is a creative choice like we talked about. Now let's take a look at this shot here. I do love this shot, I have to say, and let's look at the RGB parade on this one. Now you can see that this shot is really balanced. It's a beautiful shot, it's super colorful, but everything is within the safe zones and it all does look pretty uniform. You've got kind of this spike here in the red and that's definitely representing this flower here in the shot, but overall it looks really balanced. Let me show you though what I might do to change the look of this shot within keeping it in the safe zones. This time I'm going to use the color curves and I'm going to head over to the blue line and I'm going to bring out the blue shadows a bit. And now we've changed the tonality of this shot a little bit. Again, it's still within the safe zones, but it looks a little bit different than it did originally. Now let's just scrub our playhead and make sure that with the movement of the shot, that everything stays within range, and it definitely does. I'm curious to know which look you guys liked better with this hummingbird shot. Let me know in the comments. It's really just a matter of personal preference. Before we get to the third scope, and this one is super, super important, if you guys like this video, let me know. Give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell. All right, the next scope we're going to be looking at is what's called the vector scope. And what you're seeing here when you look at this vector scope is how far the colors in your shot are pulling toward these different tones. You've got the R for red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow. So you can see if something's really spiking out and looks too saturated, like for instance, this yellow in this shot seems pretty saturated. We can balance things out a little bit better here in the vector scope. So let's say these yellows look like they're really sticking out kind of far. I can use the hue versus saturation curves to kind of bring in those yellow tones so they don't stand out as so much more saturated than the rest of our colors. But for me, this isn't the primary use for the vector scope. This is what I think the vector scope is really good for, correcting for skin tones. When you're using the vector scope, you wanna make sure that you've got an extra guide visible here in your scope. To reveal it, you wanna hit that icon again here and go down here to show skin tone indicator. And you're going to get this line here in your vector scope that is a guide for making sure that any skin tones in your frame are realistic looking. You want to remember that when you're color grading, keeping in mind skin tones, if you have a person in your shot, is the most important thing because the wall could be any color. Their shirt could be any color. But people's skin tones, no matter what their ethnicity, only fall into very limited range of tones. And so when you're color grading, that is your primary concern when you've got people in your shot. Let me show you how to work it. 
Here's a shot of this woman. It looks pretty good, but if I'm really being picky about her skin tone, I do think it looks a little bit sallow. I can really easily check to see if it's in range using the crop tool or the draw mask. Let me show you how I do this. Grab the crop tool in your viewer and you're gonna wanna use the crop tool to isolate a swath of skin in your shot. And now the vector scope is just measuring this one little part of our frame. And I can see that it's not quite in line with our skin tone indicator. So we're going to fix that. I'm going to reset the crop and get rid of it. Let's head over to the color wheels. I like the color wheels because skin tones are really in the mid-tones of the face and we can make a lot of mid-tone adjustments here um, with the color wheels. The first thing I'm going to do is mask off her skin. So grab the color mask, grab the eyedropper and click and drag and isolate her skin. Now let's select view masks. And now the vector scope is once again, just measuring our specific selection. So what I'm going to do is use the color wheels to get her skin tones in line with that guideline. And knowing that I thought her skin looked a little sallow, that means it kind of had a green undertone. So I'm going to push things more into the pink and that is going to help me align better with that skin tone indicator. Now this color correction is only going to be applied to our selection, not to the entire frame. So this is just going to correct her skin tone. I'm gonna bump up the softness a little bit here to try to get more of her skin highlighted and selected. And then let's turn off the view masks. And this is what our shot looks like. Here's the before. See how she does look kind of green there? And here is the after. She has a much like healthier tone to her face. All right, let's take everything we just learned and try to correct a really challenging shot. This shot here is super blue toned. This camera person clearly didn't really white balance uh, their camera before they shot this, but don't worry, using the scopes, we can fix it. In this situation, the first thing I would do is grab the color balance tool and just get us started. So here's what the balance color effect did. Now it looks a little more green. I'm just going to leave it here on automatic because we don't really have anything white in the shot to use as a white balance. And we're just going to work from here. The next thing I'm going to do is add the color curves. I'm gonna pump up the reds a little bit and bring down the greens a little bit. All right, so far to me, that's a bit of an improvement. I think we could do even more. Next, I'm going to head on over to the vector scope and add color wheels and let's mask out her skin. All right, so we've got her face isolated here and you can see that the colors are skewing more toward the red. So I'm just gonna very gently nudge it down a little bit greener. Let's turn off the mask and see how we look. Okay, I think we're getting somewhere. So now that color correction is only applied to her skin tone. Let's add another set of color wheels for the entire shot and just do some fine tuning here. I'm gonna head back to the RGB parade and let's just increase the saturation a little bit. On the tint, I'm going to bring up the reds a hair and let's warm up that color temperature as well. I'm going to warm up the highlights a bit. Everything's still within range in our RGB parade. And let's take a look at the before and after. All right, I think we can all agree that is quite an improvement. Do you feel like you have a better grasp on scopes after watching this tutorial? Let me know in the comments if you found this helpful. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I picked out some other videos I think you might really like. I'll see you guys again.